Hold on. I'm scrolling. You were just playing Isaac? That's pretty true. Hero's not a word I use lightly. Hey, am I the asshole for telling my pregnant wife to stop acting like a child? The, the post is written like a comment, and I love it. It's written like every paragraph is one sentence. I, 35M, and my wife, 33F, are currently expecting our first child in December. I live in chronic pain. That would be weird. I live in chronic pain due to a slew of health issues. I also work a job where I'm on my feet constantly. That fucking sucks. That's, that's like two bad things that make each other worse. But I, I can't get a new job right now due to personal reasons. But I plan to as soon as possible. Listen, throw away to protect my privacy. Here's my life story. But some things are too personal even for Reddit, okay? I don't want to tell you why I can't get another job. But I plan to as soon as possible. My wife quit her job right after we found out we were expecting. We'd always planned this. Problem is, she's gotten really lazy. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Oh. Mm. I understand pregnancy is hard, but it's gotten to the point she won't even make food or clean the house sometimes. She's been whining and complaining constantly since the moment she took the test. She sounds like a child. I hungry, I sore. I hungry, I sore. My head hurts, I'm sick, I can't shit, etc. I understood these things are normal during pregnancy, so as much as it annoyed me, I bit my tongue. Yo, hold up, brother, she's saying I hungry? I sore? Can I, I info? <laughs> I, I have many questions I want to ask. I just want to put info on um, everything. The second I'd get home every night, she'd want me to do something for her. She expected me to cook and clean as soon as I got home every night. The straw that broke the camel's back happened a couple days ago. I'd just gotten home from a 10-hour shift and I was having a flare-up. I just wanted to have a bath and relax because I was in so much pain. I told her I had a terrible day and to just door dash something. I rarely let her do this because those fees are freaking ridiculous. So tr So true! So I thought it would be a treat, but she said she can only eat home-cooked meals and that everything else just makes her sick. This is where I might be the asshole. I yelled at her and told her I had the worst day. She needs to stop complaining and be an adult for once, so she started crying. I immediately apologized over and over, but she left anyway. A couple of hours later, my mother-in-law called me and called me a misogynistic what? and a slew of other names. I hung up because I don't need that. Now the beans are spilled and all the women in my family are mad at me and my wife still won't speak to me. So am I the asshole? Um, well, like, here's the thing. Okay. Careful, Ned! I don't subscribe 100% to the idea that a pregnant woman is above criticism. She can be pregnant, I sore, I hungry, hormonal, and still be an asshole to you, whether it's understandable given the circumstances or even beyond, you know, it could be not understandable. Because she could just be like having it out for you. That being said, the start of the post where you said she's gotten really late i mean here can i ask you a question your wife as soon as she got a, a a positive pregnancy test she quit her job that was your plan the whole time what the hell do you want her to do of course she's going to be lazy she's got like a she's pregnant so like you basically said her job is growing the baby and like b i mean I, I, maybe there is no B. <laughs> you basically told her, like, just rest. You need nine months or, you know, eight months from the positive test to, to focus on yourself. And then it's like, you know, she's bringing you complaints the way that it seems like you asked for. And then you're going, what the hell? I'm sore. Which is true. I understand. It's like... I don't know. I, I, I'm, it's, I'm being honest with you. For me, this is an everybody sucks here. 
The Lord of the Manor needs a clean house. The Lord of the Manor says the DoorDash fees are too freaking high. Like it definitely, look, when you're pregnant, look, I've only, I didn't, I was not pregnant. I've only even observed one pregnancy, unless you count me being born, I suppose, which I, I observed, but thankfully has been wiped from my memory. There's some parts of it that suck really bad. First trimester, Kate had horrible motion sickness, or not motion sickness, morning sickness. And also for like three months was like, please don't eat anything. The smell of what you're eating makes me want to throw up. And also don't come near me because the smell of you makes me want to throw up. And I was like, eh, okay, honey, uh, I love you. I'll be down here in my office, I guess. Uh, and then the second trimester was like the Garden of Eden. Everything was fine. You start doing stuff to prepare for like the baby. You're like building a family unit. And then the third trimester is just a lot of like, I wish this baby would get out of me. I wish this baby would get out of me. Like combined with like the Ridley Scott, H.R. Geiger type stuff where she'd be like, check this out. And she like, show me your stomach. And there's like a foot going like, <laughs> So I can understand, like, why, why she's hungry and sore. Uh-oh. <laughs> Does it hurt a lot? I don't know. I was mostly just putting on, like, 25 pounds of sympathy weight out of pure laziness for the most. I'm playing a lot of Fall Guys. <laughs> It's pretty much what well, there's not much else and you, when you do everything there's nothing else to do after that you know you're just sort of chilling waiting for the waiting for the baby to show up anyway well yeah i mean i don't even know what else just they're both like bad here they're both bad i mean i'm not saying he needs he's bad because he doesn't wait on his wife's every need like he's his own person as well he's got a like work hard, harder than usual right now, but there's still a limit. Like, if he's had a hard day, I just... I mean, honestly, it's very reasonable you come back from a 10-hour work day and she's like, cook some food for me, and he's like, can we just DoorDash tonight? And she's like, no, I have to eat home-cooked food. Well, then fucking cook some food, lady. Sorry, but like... Every human being has their limits. You just let it give them. Can you wait? Can you have a snack and wait like a couple hours? You'll have a bath and decompress a little bit, and then you can make some food. He's still a human being as well. But he should not call his pregnant wife lazy, even if it is true. That's too far. You can't win that argument. Like, it's like calling a little kid like an asshole. Like, you can think it, and in private, you could be like, Am I gonna? like that kid who pushed my daughter at the park and she fell down. In my head, I'm like, that kid's a fucking dickhead. But he's three. You can't get, you can't, you, you can't be the guy in the park and be like, this asshole pushed my kid, you know? You know you've already lost the argument as soon as it starts. And in my head, I'm also like, it's probably just that his mother is the dickhead. And the kid is just like an extension right now. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. All right, let's see. This one, there's some... I mean, there's some conversations to be had here. There's some controversy. Everybody sucks here. I lived with chronic pain and I've been pregnant. So my opinion is above criticism. It sounds like neither one of you want to be supportive. It's more of a competition of who has it worse. I don't totally agree with this comment, but I do think it's fairly reasonable. I don't think that in the, at least in this post, I don't think he's saying, I have it harder than her. I think he just wanted to take a damn bath. Wait, but then why, uh, hold on, what did he say to her again? Oh uh, yeah, he told her to stop being a child. Uh, be an adult for once. Okay, well, I can, yeah, sh I mean, he's, look, you're an asshole for snapping, but it happens to everybody. He lashed out. He was in an emotional, stressed out moment. He lashed out. I'm not excusing it. I'm simply saying, you know. 
he's in chronic pain but has no choice but to work a 10-hour shift and then come home and to cook and clean. In those 10 hours, she can't pull up a chair, do some dishes, throw pasta in a pot, throw some clothes in a machine. Maybe scrub the floors a little bit. Maybe do the taxes. Really, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe dust, do a little dusting. Maybe she could take some of those heavy boxes down to the garage. Sorry. <laughs> do the responsible thing. Do the adult thing. Boring. Not the asshole. I'm going to try to say this as gently as possible. It doesn't sound like you two should be having a kid. All right. Um, that's a problem, Ocean Spice. That's the kind of, you don't really have to type that at this point. They're in the third trimester. It's uh, kind of in it for the, the long haul at this point. Not the asshole. I don't understand why anyone would quit their job when they find out they're pregnant unless she's on doctor's ordered bed rest. This is a bad plan. She should be saving her paycheck for everything the baby will need. Kind, kind of a hot take. I sort of agree. Although, listen. I, I, I'm a man. I shouldn't be saying this stuff. I think you can work in the second trimester. The first, even the first trimester... If, if we stopped people from working during the first trimester, we'd lose all those great sitcom moments where a lady's at work and she throws up and then her co-worker who's like a little snarky but everyone loves her even though she drinks a little too much would be like, you know, you might be pregnant. And then she'd be like, no, that's not... And then she thinks back to when her and Mr. Sheffield, the plane was going to crash and then they... And, and, so, and then she's like, my God... Maybe I am pregnant. You know, I, and we can't lose those moments. Those are the hallmarks of Western media. What are you talking about? Listen, I did. I also read a post on r slash shit mom group say last night that made me laugh where uh, a woman said that her and her husband both quit their job because their kid was teething. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? They're like, our kid has really been having a hard time with teething, so my husband and I both quit our jobs. I was like, teething's not easy, but can I tell you? That is not, if you were looking at like a graph of even only with like a two-year-old right now, the hardest parts of being a two-year-old, teething doesn't even register. You wouldn't even get like a, like a push alert on your phone on that day. Good for them. Well, but then in their post, they were like, we were thinking about starting a restaurant or a cafe or something like that, so we have more time. Um, and I was like, oh no, they're stupid. Haven't you ever seen Kitchen Nightmares? Okay, everybody sucks here. Everything's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, give me something crazy. Give me something crazy. Everybody sucks here. This isn't the pain Olympics. Come on, give me some of the cold. Hit me. Hit me. I want you to hit me. Come on. All right, whatever. Couldn't get it. There's not enough craziness. It's been a pretty spicy react court today, though. Am I the asshole for lying about a food allergy? Oh, no, they're vegan. If, they, if they're a, a nine-year-old vegan woman, Reddit's going to eviscerate them, man. Um, the Reddit hierarchy of shit rolling downhill is like, it's got to be like old, <laughs> maybe vegan, teenagers, la landlord. I don't know. But on, am I the asshole? I don't know. Am I the asshole? People really respect homeowners. They like they're they're big about like you know it's your your it's your home, you are the king of the castle. You are the you're the lord of the fife. You make the rules. I'm the asshole for lying about a food allergy. I'm vegan. Have been for over five years. I'm lucky to live in a major city. Okay, Reddit is like they're gear they're gearing up for one of these. Lives in a major city. Vegan for five years. Let me guess. Good job. Two supportive parents. Check one of those. With a plethora of entirely or partially vegan restaurants. But when I visit my family in rural Pennsylvania, my options become non-existent. Attitudes towards veganism here range from ignorance to outright hostility. 
I try to avoid eating out with my family when I'm home at all costs, but sometimes it simply isn't avoidable. For example, my, my sister's wedding rehearsal dinner. My sister had her dinner at the foremost fine dining establishment in the town. It's a big old tavern that bills itself as a French-influenced steakhouse. Menu fare is every imaginable cut of steak drowned in butter with some chicken and fish drowned in butter, plus sides of veggies and mashed potatoes that are, yes, smothered in butter. The one or two vegetarian dishes are buttered and drowned in creamy sauce. Given that my little brother used to wait tables here, I know they frown upon substitutions and don't use much veggie oil for the sake of quality. Okay? I've had two negative experiences here. I tried to explain my vegan diet my first time here in depth, yet my sad little plate of steamed broccoli was drizzled with butter and my iceberg lettuce salad came with ranch. The second time a chef came out personally and promised me his tomato pasta dish was vegan only, to me to, only for me to find out they swirled Parmesan cheese into the red sauce to disguise they accidentally sprinkled it on top. That incident broke my trust completely. Sounds kind of good with it, though. Like, I can understand why you would be concerned. It sounds kind of tasty with it, to be honest. It, would, it sucks for you, but it wouldn't suck for me, I think is what I'm going to say. For my sister's dinner, I called ahead, told the chef I have life-threatening food allergies to meat, proteins, dairy, and egg. They were like, uh-huh. Sure you do. <laughs> Why don't you just say you're vegan? <clears throat> I was served a dish of plain pasta with salt and pepper with fruit, which sucked, but I appreciated the consideration. For those allergies, though, they had to scrub down the whole kitchen, clean the fryers, check the ingredients list of their products. That prep apparently cost them an extra two hours, and I didn't realize this. They charged my parents, who are paying for the rehearsal, an extra several hundred dollars for their time. My sister and parents are livid. I already sent my mom the several hundred needed to cover the extra cost, but they're upset at me for lying and humiliating the chef and the restaurant, whom they have close ties to. My sister's wedding is this weekend, and something tells me it's going to be tense. Personally, I think if this restaurant's going to continue with their ignorance and inconsideration, they're getting what they deserve. Am I the asshole for ensuring my needs are met? Okay. Um, not, not, not the asshole in some ways. Listen, you should never lie sometimes. Everybody knows this. Rather than lie to the restaurant, they could have been like, I'm just not going to have a meal at the rehearsal. I'm just going to have wine. Or oh, I'm going to eat before. Or maybe I'm going to bring like a vegan protein bar in my pocket or something like that, right? It's not a huge deal. That would have been the right way to solve it. That being said, I can also see why she would lie about it since her trust was betrayed a couple of times. Couldn't she have just lied and said she gets like horrendous early onset like diarrhea or something like that? Shouldn't have to say it's lethal. Like, that puts a lot of onus on the restaurant. She couldn't be like, if I eat any of these things, I will instantly poop my pants in your expensive booths. Then they probably would have... They, just, they wouldn't have done the cleaning, maybe, but they would have respected their dietary concerns, I think. But I don't think she's an asshole in this situation. Especially because she paid for the extra cleaning. Like most people, at least on Reddit, it would have been like, my parents paid for it. I told them, I don't think it's my fault that they paid for it when I would never have paid for it if the restaurant had asked me to do that. You know, like I... Also, I, is this really... This can't be like a common practice, right? That, oh, sure, you want to have some plain pasta at the restaurant? That's no problem. That'll just be... The cost of the pasta It's around 23 bucks uh, and also 400 bucks for the cleaning fee. Like that... I don't think that that makes any sense. <laughs> that, that doesn't pass the sus detection, but she paid it anyway. Joe Kangaroo 27 thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. She should have just not eaten. Eaten before, eaten after. But I do understand why she lied. And I think post-lie situation and, and consequences, I think they handled it well. So I would like to say, not the asshole. Apparently they're the asshole, though. 
because on Reddit, we don't like vegans, for one. And then nobody should ever, under any circumstances, lie. Unless the old ball and chain asks you if her ass looks fat in that dress. In which case you say, of course you, uh, no, it would never. Uh, that shit. Hey, okay, let's see. Let's see if the prediction is right here. You're the asshole. Hi, someone with, oh, here we go. Someone with the moral high ground. Hi, someone with an actual food allergy, lactose and potentially gluten. Please don't use uncondition that can and is life-threatening to make your life easier. Also, you, their job, 10x harder. Holy crap, this is my most liked comment. Yay. <laughs> Edit two. My allergies are not life-threatening, but they are a pain in the assets. Hi, someone with one point question mark food allergies here. Please don't pretend to have food allergies that are life threatening. I mine aren't, but some people's are. Thanks for the Reddit comment. Or Reddit comment. One hundred percent. This proud twenty year vegan here and the parent of a child with life threatening butt allergies. <laughs> what? Excuse me? Your child has a life-threatening butt allergy? I don't understand. Oh, no! Nice. <laughs> oh, man. People who lie about this to get their way literally make my blood boil. No, they don't, but I get that it makes you angry, which is also fine. I understand. Bring your own food. This is not a vegan restaurant. You can't expect this steakhouse to cater to your vegan requirements. I think that's definitely fair. I mean, this is not an unfair comment, in my opinion. You're the asshole, and this really got me. Personally, I think that if this restaurant is going to continue with their ignorance and inconsideration, they got what they deserved. This sort of attitude is what makes many people hate vegans. Okay, I mean, that's also not unfair. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> to say. I don't hate vegans at all. And I, as someone who was, it was 12 years ago, I was a vegetarian myself for like six months. Malf and I did it because we both bet each other that we couldn't. And then I was introduced to a lot of great cuisine as a result. To this day, I, I would eat less meat if we could get the whole household on the same page there. Also with the baby sometimes. It's just beef. He's, beef and chicken are kind of like a wonder food when you're actually like growing. It, 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 like one little piece of meat has got lots of vitamins and minerals. Anyway, the point is, that's, that's not the point. When I was a vegetarian, I realized... Shit was, it's actually like really annoying because sometimes you'll just be like minding your own business. You'll like go to a barbecue. You'll bring a salad. People will be like, why do you have that salad? You'd be like, oh, I'm a vegetarian. Then they would get on your ass because they have a preconceived notion that you get on their ass. They would, be, like, they would almost be like threatened by your dietary choice. They, like you think you're better than them or something. And you're like, I'm really just trying to like eat my salad. They're, oh, hum, does this make you jealous? Nom, 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 nom. Oh, look. Oh, this steak is so juicy. Nom, 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 nom. Like when you actually don't care. So I think people have this idea sometimes that like all vegetarians and vegans have a position of moral superiority and like turn up their nose at people who eat meat. When I think in reality, that's a very small percentage of people like that, especially as it's kind of grown as a, as a habit. Most of the people are just like normal people who want to, you know, they just make their own dietary choices for whatever reason, environmental, health or ethical or whatever. And then they just want to be like kind of, kind of like left alone without having people be like, you know, well, you're going to get a garden salad. I'm going to order two steaks just to make, okay, well then fucking fine. Do, who cares? I don't know. Die of heart disease. I don't care. Like, I actually don't care. I'm just here to eat something. Owned. I'm so owned. Clogging my arteries to own you because you're eating a, a, a salad. It doesn't make any sense. It's very weird. Anyway. Anti-vegan rhetoric is like is is a very cringe like 2010s era bit, maybe even late 2000s. You're the asshole for lying and saying they got what they deserved. That being said, I do think that's true. 
<laughs> yep. Oh, no, a bullet list. We skip those. You're the asshole. People like you are why people with real life-threatening food allergies aren't taken seriously. Is that true, or do you just want them to feel bad? Because that doesn't seem right. It seems like they took her food allergy seriously. I don't, and I don't see read anything in her post that is like an indication that they're not going to take it seriously next time, especially if they get paid like a few hundred extra bucks to clean their kitchen. That seems like a win-win. Who doesn't take life-threatening allergies seriously? I don't even want to go here, okay? But there are people. Like, people... I, I hate... And a lot of stand-up comedians have a joke like this. That's like, you know... I was on an airplane, and I was eating a peanut butter sandwich, and the stewardess came over and told me that I can't eat peanut butter because someone on the plane has a nut allergy. And I said, well, that's too bad for them. If, you know, something, something, if your genes are this bad, maybe you shouldn't even, blah, blah, blah. like, just telling people that, like, their kids should be dead because they can't eat peanuts, meanwhile being, like, 40 pounds overweight themselves. Like, it's, you got, it's just a, a, a bit of a double standard. I, I've, I, for a long time, I've been like, I may enjoy the rest of the special, but that bit itself is, like, it, to, to me, it's kind of a bad look that you're like, I should be allowed to eat peanut butter wherever I want, even if it does kill somebody's kid. So I, I think people do take food allergies seriously but maybe even still not as seriously as they uh as they could like we actually had a situation at our daycare where we got a text from one of the parents because we brought in like cookies one day and then the parent was like hey can you send me a screenshot of like the ingredient list of those cookies we need to see if they have hazelnuts or walnuts in them luckily they didn't but it was like a nice wake-up call because i was like man i didn't even think about that like, I didn't even think about looking at the ingredient list before we... I was just like, we're doing a nice thing sending cookies to the daycare. Now, uh, I'm like, I'm sending fucking nothing. <laughs> Nobody's getting anything nice anymore. And that's fair. I, they would probably rather not get anything nice than be killed by a food allergy. But peanuts, I'm like, oh, we got to watch out for peanuts. I didn't even think about the hazelnuts and the walnuts and the almonds and the... And the so-ons and the so-forth. But anyway. You could have just asked for a garden salad with the dressing on the side. Jesus Christ, you give us vegans and vegetarians a bad name. And not that bad. Well, uh, okay, maybe. <laughs> but they tried to do that a couple of times at the restaurant. And the restaurant didn't respect their dietary concerns. They put butter on it or like Parmesan cheese or something like that. So that's why she thought she had to go to the next level. Oh, no. Oh, no, this is okay. <laughs> As a former server in both casual and fine dining restaurants in a major U.S. metropolis, that restaurant is absurd. They give you pasta and fruit. What did they heck? Why the heck did they need to clean multiple fryers? It makes no sense. They called in the kitchen deep clean, but they didn't have the foresight to plan a single dish and know which extremely limited items. It appears to be an establishment run by freaking idiots. <laughs> this fair. All right. I mean, I don't think they'd really... I, I, soft, you're the asshole. Soft, you're the asshole, okay? That's, it's like a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode. Larry uh, is talking to... Larry's dating someone way out of his league. Let's say mm, Cameron Diaz returns to acting. On their date... Cameron Diaz says, oh, I love that place. But like Larry's like, why don't we go to Aritzia? And then Cameron Diaz is like, I, I love that place, but I can't go back ever since I turned vegan. They have animal products in all their food, even when I ask for them to not have any animal products. Larry goes, why don't you just lie and tell them that if you eat any butter, it'll kill you. And then Cameron, hi, don't talk to me, Larry. What did I do? You know your, your, your little bright idea with telling them I'm deathly allergic to butter? Well, they had to close down the restaurant because uh, they had to do three hours of deep cleaning and then they put it on my bill at the end. Cameron, how could I have known that? It, that I mean, that's not a, like a season four golden age curve bit. 
Fuck you, Larry. But that's like a season 12. That could be a season 12. Fuck you, you bald prick. And hey, Larry, don't call me. Anyway, um, scrolling. Just, just coming down from that one for a second. I'm just scrolling. Just scrolling. Am I the asshole for asking my husband's friend if he was going to bring his wife's ashes when he moves in with us? What the hell is... The <laughs> what? I guess I shouldn't laugh, but... Kind of a it's, it's a very bold statement. My husband's friend lost his wife four months ago. He had cremated and used to keep her ashes in their home. He unfortunately had to lose his home to medical debts and asked me and my husband to let him move in with us and stay for a few weeks till he figures it out. I'd like to go back to the home page now. I'm not having any fun. He told us this during dinner. My husband said, of course, we'd welcome him to move in and stay in our house. I, for some reason, kept thinking about his wife's ashes. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not of fan cremation, but obviously I can't control how others choose to honor their deceased loved ones as much as I would like to. But still, seeing ashes or being around them gives off weird vibes that I cannot control. I decided TJ speed up and asked his friend if he was going to bring his wife's ashes as well. His friend got quiet and my husband gave him a death stare. <laughs> my friend left and then my HUD band blew up asking what the hell possessed me to ask such question. I told him I was just inquiring about the ashes since he knows how I feel about it. He said this came across as insensitive and unwelcoming towards not just his friend but his deceased wife as well. We had an argument and he called me cruel and reckless to speak to his friend the way I did. He said I should never have brought it up. He told me to get over myself and not expect his friend to part with his wife just because I'm uncomfortable. We argued some more and he told me to apologize next time I see his friend for the disrespect I displayed. But in my opinion, he made a big deal out of a question. <laughs> um, yeah, you're the asshole. For sure. This, this feels like another Curb Your Enthusiasm bit, honestly. You gonna bring the ashes? Yes, Larry. I'm going to bring the ashes. You know, that's my wife. I'm picturing like an Albert Brooks type, maybe in that role, playing himself. Um, dude, honestly, my mom was talking to me when she was here. She was like, and she was, I felt bad because she was like, she thought it was a great idea. And maybe it is. Maybe I have no vision. But she was saying, you know, instead of being cremated these days, a lot of people are choosing to, and I don't know what the word is. I think she called it wet cremation. Where they basically just kind of get put in like a sous vide. Until they get sort of like, like all their, <laughs> all their flesh gets, yeah, aquamated. That's it. You get put in like a, a, a warm bath and sous vide until like all of your flesh disintegrates. And then they just sort of like grind up your bones. And she was like, it's great because there's like less emissions from like the cremator and stuff like that. And I, I swear to you that what I said was, I don't care about the emissions from the cremator because I'm dead. That's like one, even in death, I can't be a little laissez-faire about my carbon footprint. Like, people are driving gas cars. They're taking huge road trips. You're going to guilt trip me for being cremated once? It's not like I'm going to be cremated. Like, I'm not going to make a habit of it. What percentage of a person's lifetime CO2 emissions come from cremation? It's got to be like one, one millionth, probably. Plus, I'm dead. Like... Isn't that like the greatest deal of all time? I emit a little carbon dioxide and then no more ever again? It's insanely good for the environment. Now, I'm, my, my personal belief is like, 
Also, I didn't use the incinerator. The person running the incinerator used it. All I did was die. I'm not going to take responsibility for the pollution from the incinerator. They're the one who shoveled all the coal into it or whatever. I just had the audacity to die in their jurisdiction. Regardless, you know, I, I, I'm not really that fussed about what happens to my body after I die. But like, if you're giving me the choice between cremation or uh, being slow boiled in an aluminum vat, I really would choose the cremation. That's, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a little stick. Because I, 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 I don't know, it was just in my head. Like in the furnace, I'm already dead. I'm sitting there and it's kind of like a Viking funeral, right? And then I'm like turning into ash. But like me, like my body, like slow boiling and like my skin slowly like sloughing off and stuff like that. And like my eyeballs falling out. I'm like, what if the, they didn't hinge the door properly and it like opens up and then I kind of like I'm half soupy and I spill out of the front door or something like that. Just just put me in the you could do like a pizza at the same time or something. You could put me next to the pizza. You can multi you could do some batch tasking, but like don't put me in the don't put me in the slow boiler, man. I don't want it. It's just I don't know. I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm old fashioned, but it's just like a little gross. You don't have to bury me. I'm not worried about that. I don't think I'm ever busting out of the casket or whatever, but like I don't wanna I don't wanna be sous vide and reverse seared, okay? It's just, I, I'm pretty open-minded, but that one's just, you can do it. It doesn't bother me that it's being done. I just personally don't want it done to myself. Anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. No, obviously this person is insane. It's not like the, he's not going to spread the ashes like all over your house. It's just going to sit in like an urn on the fireplace mantle until, Jigsy! Jigsy the and knocks it over and then is it is that from Meet the Parents? That is from Meet the Parents, right? Yeah, okay. Anyway, there's not much left to mind there. Moving on. Kitchen Nightmares episode where a restaurant has a uh, side hustle grinding up bones in the back. So true, Chib. Symbio, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you. Is it Gordon? What in the hell is that? All right, listen. Sous vide human. Lovely breakfast. Simple, delicious, fucking fantastic. I love the Gordon's the way he talks when he's actually doing recipes. Simple, elegant, light, airy, crispy, perfect. Perfect. For a family breakfast. Sorry. Rustic. He always, he's tw always twisting. Rustic. Gordon, Gordon Ramsay discovering the human sous vide. What? How long has he been in there? <laughs> he's fuck. That's fucking. He's sticking his finger in his body and it's going like. It's fucking goop, you donkey. It's disgusting. He's licking it. Oh, it, ta it, <laughs> it tastes as bad as it looks. Am I the asshole for telling my sister I didn't appreciate her leaving her baby with us when we were about to leave to go to the bathroom? I can't even understand what the fuck you're saying. What? There's like 27 commas in the, in the sentence that change the meaning depending on how you interpret them. Who's going to the bathroom? You or the baby or the sister? Am I the asshole for telling my sister I didn't appreciate her leaving her baby with us when we were about to leave to go to the bathroom? When we were about to leave to go to the bathroom. Me and my sister Sarah are on good terms, but we aren't close by any means. 
We see each other during family events and things like that and text occasionally, but that's about it. One of my cousin's kids turned one. So a few days ago, they had a birthday party and invited friends and family. I'm like, oh shit, is this about us? Are they changing the name? <laughs> but they've changed the names. It couldn't possibly be us. So every, okay, well done. Sarah had a three-month-old daughter and Sarah was at the party. She came later and we chatted a little bit. So everyone was starting to leave. Me and my husband, Alex, were also about to leave when Sarah came up to me and asked if I could keep an eye on my niece for a few minutes while she ran to the bathroom. Now, I want to add, I don't have an issue with this specifically. <laughs> an award for a selfless citizen of the year goes to... I don't have a problem with looking after my niece for two minutes so my sister can take a dump. My problem was that she saw we were about to go, yet she left without waiting for our answer. Yeah, because if you said no, she's going to have to hold in her, her dookie for like two hours. Why don't you just delay going for... Uh, she's just got to run to the bathroom real quick. It's no, she's, it, it's, let me keep reading. After she came back, I told her I didn't really appreciate her leaving like that without even waiting for an answer. I said there were still a few other people around she could have asked who weren't leaving. You're her sister, though. Like, that's the, it's the way obligation flows. It flows from closest relationship to closest relationship. When asked, like, your, your co-worker's husband to look after your kid for, like, a minute, It, it, it flows in the other direction. Sarah replied she didn't really think, of, think it through and saw me, so she came to me. This isn't the first time Sarah's pulled things like this, not with me particularly. Then why are you bringing it up? This isn't the first time my sister's been completely normal. Not with me, but with our parents who bend over backwards to do favors for her. So, this sounds exactly like a middle child situation. I do understand the situation and her circumstances. You, want, you understand? You, I'm sorry to get so stunlocked. You understand that people have to go to the bathroom on occasion? I do understand the situation and her circumstances now with an infant, but there's a limit, man. And the limit is zero. Because of one, I'm going to kick up a damn fuss. I get it, but maybe she should think things through for once. She started crying and said she's very overwhelmed. We ended up leaving after that, and I do feel kind of bad for what I said to her, but I don't think it warranted crying. Alex agrees with me that Sarah was overreacting a little bit, so am I the asshole? Oh, wow. You're crazy. You do not like your sister. This is turning me into a Redditor. It's literally like the biggest not a deal of all time. Hey, uh, honey, you want to leave the party? Yeah, sure. Let me just talk to my sister for a second. Hey, uh, I gotta take a, I gotta, I gotta take a number one. Can you look after your niece for forty-five seconds? <laughs> this is what happens when you get a. Um, Socially maladjusted loner with a society who just shits on them over and over. Like, it didn't nothing happen. You just gotta look after a kid for like, for like uh, less than the length of time of a Guided by Voices song. It's nothing. It's, it's nothing at all. Like, it's a completely mundane situation. I sentence you to get a life. Find God. You're the asshole. It took longer for you to write this out than it did to just wait for her to pee. Yes, that's correct. Find God. Autocorrect. I'm so crazy. She did not ask you to eat her niece. <laughs> I don't need to read the rest. Are you serious, bro? Yes, you're the asshole. She went to use the bathroom for a few minutes. She didn't even leave the house. Did staying a few extra minutes actually hurt you? Just admit you don't like your sister and everything she does annoys you. Man, this is crazy. You're the asshole. Do you have a habit of making big deals out of little inconveniences? Oh, man, she's in trouble. You really had to criticize her for asking her sister for a quick favor? Then you had a go at her? Your sister with a three-month-old likely sleep-deprived, crying, and you criticized her? Are you serious? Hard, you're the asshole. 
How dare she? Okay, well, hold on. I understand you two aren't close and it's not her fault. You sound cold and jealous. Yes, this! I got that jealous and bitter vibe from this post too. Look, you, listen. You don't need... Wait, oh, excuse me. Maybe you do need... Edit, I read from your comment that your sister's husband passed away while she was pregnant and you were bitter. Her parents were helping her through her grief. You were salty because your mom canceled your lunch date because her grief therapy was rescheduled. Uh, I now believe that this is a, uh, a fictional post. I now believe that this is a fictional post. I believe that this was a creative writing assignment designed to create the worst person in the world. One of the dumbest legal minds I have ever known. So are all of them? Yeah, but I know all the posts on Am I the Asshole are fake, but what about, what if this one was real? Am I the asshole for getting upset because my wife wants two days off a week? I'm very frustrated as I write this. I've been with my wife for 15 years. We're both 33 years old and have two wonderful children, both very young. We are both professionals in our community and earn good wages. But like many people, money is often tighter than I would like. When we had our first child, my wife decided to take a part-time job at her workplace. We had extensive conversations and had agreed that two days off a week would be beneficial for getting things done, otherwise we would struggle. We both work eight to four. Okay, it's very reasonable. Except, okay, part-time, wait, that's uh, eight to four? And it's, it's like a 40 hour, but any, look, look, that's pretty close to full-time. I would classify her as full-time. What would I say is full-time work? I would say anything over um, 9 a.m. Anything over 9.01 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday to Friday. That would be full-time and should be considered equivalent to any other full-time job in terms of output and merit, personally. Yeah, I would say as long as you're over like 24 hours and 55 minutes a week, of course, we're not counting federal holidays, like, for example, a Thanksgiving in that. So I would say, <laughs> I would say she's like a, I would say she's full. I would say she's working time and a half, honestly, quite frankly. With both of our children, she has taken 18-month maternity leaves and we are nearing the end of her last leave. As such, money is especially tight and some things have fallen off like household tasks because having two kids is a bit of a lifestyle change. So true. So true. We both agree it would be great for her to return to work part-time, but got into an argument today. She, today she told me she volunteered for the PTA starting in January so she can go into my son's school on her off days. This was a bit triggering for me because I feel the days off are for her to complete tasks that we often don't have time for. Mm, that's not a great sentence. But honey, haven't you considered that your days off are to do the housework? That's gonna, I, I think it's possible that she did not consider uh, that the same way that, that you did. <laughs> Sorry, <clears throat> moving on. I told her that much, and I feel I'm very polite in what I said. I did reference household chores like laundry, dishes, vacuuming, and whatnot. It was not to be misogynistic, but our family does happen to follow the stereotypical archaic family structure where we have a partially stay-at-home mom and me working full-time plus overtime occasionally. As your PR representative, before you put this one out there, I'm going to advise you to just put a strike through the last couple of sentences there. I don't believe that this person is a misogynist. That nothing about what they're saying is misogynistic, as far as I can tell. But just the way that they wrote, I don't mean this misogynistically, but we do happen to embody the lifestyle from a very misogynistic time. It, it makes your case a little weaker. It invites the appearance of you to be a misogynist, which is, is not necessary given the content of the post so far. Anytime you say, I'm not this, but you may not be that, you have to see what comes after the next part of the sentence. But 
people are predisposed to think that everything that comes after the but nullifies the thing that you said first. Like, I'm not a serial killer, but I do enjoy watching Ted Bundy documentaries. I'm not a serial killer. The thing that came after it doesn't make me a serial killer, but people are like, oh shit, investigate him. I just like it because he's, I'm not going to say because he's such a hottie. Have I done the bit yet where in every Ted Bundy documentary, they're like a disarmingly handsome man asked me if I could help him with his bag. And then they show a photo of Ted Bundy and he's like, just had a certain animal magnetism. He wasn't like other serial killers. Like he was, he was approachable. He was nice. He was a hottie. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. I'm <laughs> moving on. The climax of this argument was my wife getting irate and telling me that I couldn't tell her what she could do on her days off. I reminded her they were not days off, but rather an agreement where she works part time but gets our family tasks done. What? Hey, this is so. Now, like, all right, listen, listen. Why do you think you guys so much control over your wife's time? Like, I can understand where he's coming from. He's like, my wife's been on maternity leave, so there's like a reason that things are kind of in disarray right now. It's a lot of work to raise kids. You know, money's tight. We're going back to a previous arrangement before. But why? I, don't, I just don't understand why he thinks that he's in control of his wife's free time. That he's like, yeah, you can take as many days off as you want as long as you clean the entire house the whole time. He might not be a misogynist. He might just hate his wife. There's nothing in here that says he hates all women. He might just hate the one that he chose to spend the rest of his life with and have two kids with. We got to give him the benefit of the doubt, okay? No, I, that's even too far, but... I reminded her that your days off are not days off, but rather an agreement between myself and myself where you work part-time but get our family tasks done. She feels I'm being overbearing. She doesn't want to sign up for that, but she doesn't want to return to full-time work either. I'm not trying to be rude or ignorant, but I'm frustrated. I feel if she wants to volunteer at my son's school and make a commitment, she should be taking extra shifts and making more money for the family first. Also, if she's going to stay part-time, she needs to accept that family responsibility comes first. Am I being an asshole? I feel like she's being selfish by wanting full control of her days off while not working full time. I don't know if I'm right or wrong here. I'm struggling to understand her perspective. Okay, well, let's, let's read the, the edits first. <clears throat> Edit for info. Sorry, I didn't use PTA properly. It's volunteering throughout the week at school. I know PTA is one hour a month. It's not the meeting, it's the assignments. Volunteering and commitments she's making throughout the week. Roughly four hours a day on her days off. That's a lot, but at the same time, it means she's also got like 12 hours of other time. I don't mean that to say like she should, that's what it seems like that's plenty of time to make the place spotless. I'm just saying like, you know, she could still, I don't understand why that seems like he thinks that she's unable to maintain the standards of the household then. I mean, it seems like it's a lot of time for volunteering, but like it's for a good cause. It looks like I'm the asshole. I need to reevaluate priorities and apologize to my wife. I appreciate the feedback. Edit two, apparently I don't articulate myself well. She works Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. She has Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. Four days off, I guess, but we work on things together on the weekend, which is why I said two. This, is a, this guy really the kind of it's the kind of motherfucker to be like, um, it wasn't a real day off because I did the dishes. What the hell are you talking about? Welcome to being an adult and having some kids, you know, especially. It's Sunday. Put on your, your work boots. You're doing family work today. <laughs> you're still it's still labor in many ways. You're just not wearing a uniform unless you're tucking your uh your genes into your new balances like I do. I'm not a part-time dad. I do every chore she does, just as she does every chore I do. This sounds like you're doing twice as many chores as is necessary. 
we work together and have a great marriage. This was just a disagreement. I wasn't trying to divorce her or murder her for the decision. Not everything is a major thing. Well, you're the one who made the posts, Poindexter. Nobody, nobody broke into your house and, and posted on Reddit under a throwaway. So here's what I'll say first. We start out reasonable and get brought to the extremes by the comments. I'm not saying he has a point. But, well, no, I don't really have a I'm not saying he has a point at all. Because, like, what I was going to say is, you don't really get to have a, two, as many, you don't, it's hard to have, if, it, after you've made the adult decision to have kids, you don't get to necessarily have as many pre-planned 100% don't get inside of my leisure bubble days off. You can plan it as much as you want. Things come up. Sometimes you need help. Sometimes you need to, hey, can you watch her for two minutes while I go to the bathroom, sister? You know, et cetera, et cetera. But it doesn't seem like she's doing this at all. It seems like her husband is mad that the house isn't like perfectly tidy. And then she's like, I'm going to volunteer at our son's school. And then he's like, but when are you going to have time to vacuum? Like, that seems like an argument that you can't win. Unless I'm misreading the post. Or I guess he's also saying, if you have this kind of time to volunteer, you could also be working more. Which is a fair statement. I just don't know why it's also filtered through our house is a little bit dirty. Like, I'm not, I'm, it's just weird, right? Like... I think it's fair that if they have money problems, he's like, I would rather you work more than volunteer. I'm not saying it means that he's right, but I think it's a, it's a fair thing to bring up, I guess. But I also, I don't know, I think especially like <laughs> when you have a spouse, I think you have to sort of trust them that you're doing right by them and they're doing right by you. Instead of what he seems to be doing, which is like he's keeping a ledger in his head of like all the stuff that he's doing, and then he's comparing it to the ledger of what he sees his spouse doing, and he's like, well, there's an imbalance here. I'm doing more. I think he needs to... You, you would do better in most circumstances if you looked at it and you went, well, I think that we're both trying our best and occasionally getting overwhelmed and doing less for a day or two days because we need to recover a little bit and then recovering from that and then getting back to that standard in like a couple days. That makes, that makes more sense to me than this, this weird vibe that he's giving off. But maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm the crazy one. But it's kind of a crazy world these days. Also, I know we've said this before. I do think that maybe it depends on the job. But, like, my job is definitely easier than looking after a toddler, much less a baby. I mean, like, a, a newborn baby is... A, and here's a little secret for you. A newborn baby is actually, like, pretty easy to look after if you're the father. Or the, if, if you're not the mother. Let me put it that way. Mom's got a nurse all the time. It's a whole production. I don't really get it. As a dad, sure, you got to wake up in the middle of the night sometimes and do like a bottle feed. But when the baby is not hungry or upset, they just sit in like a little like baby chair and they just sort of go like this. And you'd be like, oh, I looked after the baby for like six hours today. Mostly I was just playing like a shit ton of Rocket League. That's about it. Then when they get a little older than that, especially when they start crawling and walking, then it becomes like tough, tougher at least. But my job is definitely easier than looking after my kid. Like five hours of streaming, I'm like, I'm a little hungry. Five hours like looking after my daughter solo, I'm like, I need a damn nap. And I'm not a, a, the kind of guy that naps to begin with. 
But regardless, all I'm trying to say is that it seems like he's like, I'm busting my ass at work. And sure, maybe he works at like the fire factory where he's got to grab fire out of a out of a, a, a raging inferno with his bare hands. And like, I don't, I don't know what he does. But she's on mat leave with two kids. She's probably also working herself to the damn bone. So he, he probably comes home and is like, why isn't the house clean? I was at work all day. And she, he probably comes home and she's like, why don't you have a damn better job that gives you more time off? Why didn't you apply yourself more in your younger years when you had more energy and then you could have had more flexibility at work? It could be helping me out at home right now. Like they're, they're, both, they're both probably putting in good effort is what I'm trying to say. So the argument that's like, you know, well, I was working when you were just at home looking after the kids is like, you're not going to get too far with that, I think. I don't know. Or maybe she just sucks. It's possible. It is, there is a caveat. She might just be like a little lazy, but I don't assume that about her. That's what her husband's saying, which is pretty rude. Why am I a bigger fan of your wife than you are? You're the one who married her, dummy. Anyway, let's see some comments. You're the asshole. Kids don't raise themselves. Your wife's getting involved with their schooling in the parenting community. She's not having bottomless mimosas during this time. How do you know? Do you have like a, like a, a nanny cam? You don't. Maybe now and then. Maybe. One day a week. Maybe. It's five o'clock somewhere. Glass of white Zinfandel at 11 a.m. Kids are down for nap time. You never know. And you know what? Good for her. I love that for her. Listen, your kids are small. One day they'll be grown. Do you think they'll remember whether the floor was vacuumed and the windows were washed? Or do you think they'll remember their mom was there for them? Some of my best times were volunteering at my kids' schools and they'd tell you the same. Don't take that away from your wife and kids. If you can, try to carve more time for yourself to be there for them too. You won't regret it. Even if the baseboards are dirty, they'll remember that you showed up. So true. Jesus, you didn't have to go right for my emotions, lol. It's him. Well spoken. Thank you for taking the time to write that. It's an awesome perspective. I'd never considered that before. I might be focusing on the wrong aspects of my life. I'll go for the sucker punch then. All right. Here we go. You have two types of currency to manage, the monetary and the emotional. Please take care to balance them. Now, obviously, you have to work and cover the bills and stuff, but in my experience, fathers, they lose sight of what they're working for. They work and work and work to give their kids everything and the best, and that's not flawed, but I promise sometimes you can do the best without everything. From my personal experiences, we had a great childhood. Big Christmases, family trips to Disney a couple times. Cable. Cables. The first house on the block with a dedicated landline for the internet. We had a lot. Know what we didn't have? My dad home much at all. We could have gone with less. You're absolutely right. You could have gone with less to have more. If your father had been less successful at his job, you would have gotten the internet later. And then you wouldn't be here making this crazy 500 word essay to when the guy apologized. He already apologized. Edit, thank you for the awards. I actually just talked to my dad and I told him about this post. Sanest Redditor just dropped. Hey, Dad, I just wanted to tell you about a post I made on Reddit this morning. Oh, really, son? That's cool. He was working under the wrong devotion. And at the time, he thought he was making the best choices. But looking back, he sees a lot of regrets and missed chances of opportunities. He sees all the things that didn't see as important then and wishes he'd done things differently and made more time for the things that mattered, such as being home with the kids. We also both teared up over some of the memories mentioned here. So his... His with a capital H, is God. Your father is God. This message is from Jesus Christ himself. I had no idea. I take back all that fucked up shit I said about you getting the internet too early. Don't be him waiting until he's... Don't, don't be like my dad waiting until he's retired and looking back and wishing you could do it all over the right way. Listen, 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 listen. True, but also, like, people gotta fucking... Like, they got to work. Like, I don't mean, you could all, okay, like, pull it back a little. Like, this is seeing, like, you never get that time back when, you're, when your kid is little. So make the most of it. Yeah, but, like, you can still also, like, work. I mean, I, I'm in a different situation because I have so much flexibility. But I'm just, like, one, I, I, I just think that it's maybe, a, they're going a little bit too far to the extreme. This is, hey, when you're home on a, at nights and on the weekends, be active in your child's life. Don't be looking at your phone going, that's great, honey. Of course. 
But you don't have to, like, I don't know, move down to part-time work to spend more time with your child. Just so, like, I think you're going to have that quality time in a, in a normal balance as well. Anyway, regardless. I saved this to read to my husband in the morning. Him working so much has been an issue of contention for the past several years. I'm going to pour one out for this guy's husband. Or for this, this person's husband. Because I think I would... Can you imagine you have a child with someone and then you wake up in the morning, you're like five and a half hours of sleep, you're stressed out, I got all this shit to do today. Honey, I just want to read you something real quick. It's... um a 1500 word essay from Reddit about how you're a bad father. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, you know what, they make some good, yeah, they make some good points, I'll think about that. This is a sad story, man. I, I, I'm putting myself in there. I don't even know if this person is real and I'm putting myself in their shoes and I'm, I'm, now I'm sad. Good luck. All of this is emotional to read just as a bystander. What the fuck are you talking about? As an empath, this stuff is hard to read. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm hitting like, uh, like empathy fatigue on these posts. What do you mean? If this is... Uh, now I'm because... You're turning me into a boomer. If this shit is hard to read, get ready to go through life closing your damn eyes, man. This is just a, like a relatively normal situation. I mean, not typical, but like pretty common. Like, I'm sorry, you gotta grow like a bit of a damn spine, okay? It doesn't have to be uh, made out of animantium. But you gotta be able to at least read a secondhand story of a dad spending a little too little time with his kid without it withering you to the damn core. Makes me sick. Comment deleted by user. Welcome to American bullshit laws. <laughs> Info. I know what this is. Is this really considered part-time work? Anyway, you know what? I think we made it. We made it through. Oh, man. This is a good session. I didn't expect to yell so much. I honestly thought we would uh, do like an hour and then go back and play. Uh, go back and play some Dome Keeper.